everybody. It's Linda G with our good morning. wonderful Sterling. <laughs> good and morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, today is what? The 19th? Uh, it is, you know, I forget. Sorry about that. I think it might be the 19th. Uh, 18th. 18th. Oh, yeah, today's the 18th. Okay. Gosh, pretty soon it's going to be time to vote. Yeah, no, absolutely. We're almost on top of it. After next absolutely. week, it's going to fly by. Right, right. So you have some announcements? We have some housekeeping as we do at the top of every show. So a couple of quick items. Uh, the first item is that uh, every time we get up to another thousand subscribers for Linda G's uh, channel, uh, I give out a free half hour reading. So right now we're at 38,600 subscribers, 400 more. So everybody that puts a comment in this video that starts it off with love, the word love, we know they wanna be in the contest and we'll pick the winner for the half hour session uh, from the comments in the show. I'm pretty sure you'll make the next 400 uh, this week. You think so? Wow. And then I'll be so. 39. Oh my exactly. God. I never thought I'd get past 100. Yeah. And Thank also you, very, a very quick shout out to uh, Andrew. Andy knows who he is. Andrew's been typing up all the questions for the show and then putting timestamps on them and putting them in the comments. So uh, thank you, Andrew. A shout out to Andrew. He knows who he is. Uh, and if you need to reach us for any reason, info at sterlingpsychicmedium.com. Right. I'm going to shout out and a thank you to Andrew for doing He's been uh, typing up all the questions? He has and been putting timestamps on them in the comments. Oh, okay. In, uh, on YouTube or? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, but Dan doesn't take them and. Well, no, I, I think that uh, what he, uh, what Andrew's been doing is putting a timestamp on. So he watches the video, records the question, and then put the timestamp where it is in the video. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So I felt the need to say thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. So from, are we ready? We are. Okay. From the other side, does JFK or John Jr. have a message for us? Right. And I asked Linda and Daniel to put this in there because it is that they both came through this week, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, and then Junior as well, John Jr. But they both came through with kind of an interesting message. Uh, and this is the, the kind of summary of the message is that uh, right now, these are very important times domestically and internationally for the U.S. And John F. Kennedy, our president, was trying to say that when he was here, he's trying to bring together all sides. A lot of differing opinions, but bring together all sides, that was fine. And then John Jr. was saying what he tried to do with his magazine, like George Magazine, right. which had like a five-year run, he was trying to bring together other facets of society with politics. So they're both trying to bring it all together in terms of having a good collaborative discussion. He felt they felt that that was very necessary right now. They also made it clear that the decisions being made right now will affect the next 100 years. We're very clear about that. And they also said that we're all going to be very successful through this election. So it's kind of a three or four tier message that they both want to get across. And I thought uh, that, that was definitely worth sharing. So. Wow. That's wonderful. <laughs> there goes Richard again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my ex-husband roommate. And he always doesn't get that I need to do these shows and walks right through. He doesn't bother anybody, though. So that's, but he did say very successful. He did. They, they both uh, emphasized that at the end of the message that I had with them, the conversation, and let everybody know we're going to be very successful, like all in capital letters kind of a thing. So uh, I said, great. But I thought it was also interesting that they saw the reference to the next 100 years, right. what happens during like this election cycle. So. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's good news. Thank you, JFK. It, is. it comes to me too. Yep. Uh, will the Republicans be investigated if they try to send votes or throw out, steal votes or throw out ballots? And if evidence is found, will they be prosecuted? Like, you know, down where you are, they got fake ballots. They do, yeah. Um, those are uh, ballot boxes that were put out by the Republican Party that are uh, not official, but they said official. That's right? a whole thing going on. You know, what, what I get on that very clearly is going to be two Republican governors that will be held accountable for manipulating the votes, uh, whether the vote counts, the vote boxes. So I'm seeing two GOP governors, absolutely. Because it's and a I felony. Think, 
Yeah, I know it is. Uh, and that's going to be very soon after the election. I'll give you in the month of December that a lot of that's going to come out. But the manipulations that they try to do won't be successful. So. Oh, thank you. I feel no. I feel nothing burgers. I feel that they can do this and that, but it's such an influx of votes that they can't, they can't, they'll drown in it. It's like a wave. Right, absolutely. Is the Bush family in any way benefiting financially from 45? That's interesting. No. Well, here's the thing. They're, they're not benefiting any way that's not uh, available to them just through the creative tax laws. So there's not anything that's going on under the table, I think was the inference of the question. Probably, I yeah. Get they're just benefiting from uh, the tax laws the way they are. So, right. Yeah. As I think my son Jacob told me when, uh, what president, I think it was when JFK in it was in office, the rich paid fat in taxes. Yeah. If 45 tries to steal the vote through electoral college, will his plans be successful? No, so here again, the, the plans won't be successful, but I do see a manipulation of electoral college and the votes. So I do see Trump and I'll call it his, uh, his cronies, if you will, uh, trying to manipulate the electoral college, but that'll be uncovered. Actually, that's going to be an FBI investigation. So uh, they won't be successful, but they will try to do it. Okay, but it, in the meantime, Biden's in. He is. Biden will get in. Will 45 be involved in a war with China? Certainly a trade war, but not a military war. It was right to the inference of that question. I don't see a military war. The trade war is going to be going on for quite a while. It'll, it'll take Biden a good year to try to uh, reset that. The, okay. the trade because what, what Trump has done is he's set China so badly that China went then to all the other world nations creating trade deals with them kind of against the U.S. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So no, our dairy farmers are even committing suicide at high rates right now. Right, right. But um, uh, it, does China know Trump's going to lose? So they're just sort of waiting for it to happen. Yeah, I mean, as they say, the word on the street is he's going to lose. So, you know, China is just as shrewd in some ways as is Russia and their intelligence. So they kind of know what's going on behind the scenes. They do. Okay. Does everyone have a soulmate? They do. And um, in many cases, you can have more than one soulmate, and many do. So every soulmate is kind of on your life path, and you kind of predestine that before you come down here. And right. I always tell people that your soulmates they leave an imprint on your heart. So it kind of, right. you know, when you meet them and you learn a lesson, even if it's a short two year relationship or it's a divorce. But they leave an imprint on your heart. Does it have to be a uh, romantic liaison? Can it be a mother or a sister? It can. It can. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure can. Can you tell us what Amy Coney Barrett is hiding and does not want the Democrats to know? The Democrats to know. So this is um this is an interesting situation because what what I get on that is that. What's being hidden are our financial connections to major hospital groups. And you may say, yeah, that's kind of interesting. But the reason that this is a distraction and, and a difficult situation is that she's acting on behalf of financial interests of large hospital groups. And that's why they want to get the Affordable Care Act kicked out to get rid of pre-existing policies for all the COVID-19. So it's a huge financial benefit to hospital groups right. to not have the pre-existing condition my my guides tell me are telling me that it's a financial connection with hospital groups that's really going to be a problem. Oh wow! Will Medicare Medicaid under Trump be expanded? Be expanded, and then the next question is under Biden question mark. Mm -hmm. No, you know uh, what I pick up on that is not expanded under. Uh, Trump, but expanded under Biden. But it feels to me they're telling me something on the order of like a 10% increase or something like that nature. So it'll be expanded. Maybe it's as much as 12%. I haven't looked at the numbers, but it looks like 10 or 12% they're telling me under Biden, but not under Trump. Yeah. And you know, uh, they're already talking, although they know Trump. I don't see how they could even begin. Maybe this is bull. But they said that if he's in again, Trump's in again, he's going to definitely cut Social Security. 
It was absolutely, yeah. So the rich can have more money. <laughs> Has Amy Coney Barrett lied under oath during this hearing? Well, i uh, come pretty close to it, but uh, one of the biggest problems is a big omission, omission of facts. So okay. not all the facts have come out. And um, well, I mean, the, the, I think the large hospital group relationship didn't come out. And uh, I think there's some other things regarding her personal background that I won't go into, but there's some personal things there that I, you know, borderline ethical uh, situation. Well, uh, Al Franken, did you see him on the news? And, I and she was coming up for one of those posts she had. He asked her a specific question and she answered it. Then just now when Congress asked her the same question, she acted like she didn't know. And was that kind of an ethical And question? that's a blatant lie. Okay, got it. Yeah. So they may get it because they're going to get Kavanaugh lying to Congress. Right. Okay. So um, why were the majority of crop circles created Locate the uh, created located in the south central area of England. So crop circles, you know, are a phenomenon that, that are really are part of our alien friends or alien interaction. But uh, to say that they're solely located in the southern portion of you know the UK is not true. They're actually worldwide. It's a worldwide phenomenon, even in Switzerland and other parts of the world, Australia. But the the thing that my guys are telling me is that uh, there was a lot of navigation that the aliens were doing in the southern part of the UK, like where Stonehenge is. So that's so there there were more frequency of crop circles in that area, but it's a worldwide phenomenon. Wow. Um, I have a couple of friends that have been experiencing vertigo. That's so weird. You got this question because I had a horrible event, a vertigo, mm -hmm. not even two weeks ago. I didn't tell anybody, but I was vomiting. It was that bad. I woke up at two o'clock in the morning and the room was spinning, desperately trying to you know, make it stop. So that's interesting because other people have been telling me they're getting vertigo. Is this just a weird coincidence of a variety of ills or is there some dimensional change going on? So, you know, predominantly, a uh, couple factors going on there, but the earth is going through some uh, uh, electromagnetic changes. There's some changes going on around the earth. And so people that are more sensitive to that, psychics, whatnot, uh, will experience more of a severe reaction to that. So that's a good part of that. Um, there, there are other people going through uh, what I'll call mild, milder medical conditions that are causing that, but certainly the electromagnetic changes in the earth are causing people sensitive to it to have those problems. You know, you're okay. one of them. Congratulations. And do you see a massive communication disruption or power outage in October or November? Uh, yes. Um, and for me, it's like a two day event. I'll call it a one to two day event, but it's going to be more regionally specific. So it'll occur in parts of the nation, not going to be nationwide. Uh, but it will be, and it looks like it'll disrupt uh, internet communications as opposed to uh, the power grid. I see more internet, one to two days, regional, big big hit in the Midwest, um, and it looks like even the Northeast. Uh, wow. I don't know if I see the West or, uh, or Southeast. So Midwest, uh, Northeast. Do aliens use astrology? <laughs> No, not, not specifically, you know, aliens understand, uh, you know, astronomy very well, but they don't use astrology uh, in terms of, you know, guiding their actions or studying in terms of- Or what they were when they were born. I better not fly to Jupiter because I'm in retrograde. Okay, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. But, but. Um, do physical characteristics from past lifetimes carry over to the present lifetime? The, the answer is only if you want them to. So you, you have a little bit of choice in that. So for example, um, if you were an incredible singer or musician, you might want to carry that forward to the next life because, you know, but, uh, but it's really a matter of choice is what they're telling me. So uh, it's not something thrust upon you. There's been some past life television shows and stuff like that woman who knew she had a life in Ireland and she had all those children and she could describe where she lived and everything. 
and you saw her picture and you could see the resemblance between mm -hmm. her body now and then. And a lot of war, uh, Civil War people that knew that they were in the war and you see right. the picture and it's like, so it's amazing, yeah. Three judges who worked on the Bush team to ensure the Florida win against Gore, despite Gore having 3 million more popular votes, were Justice Roberts, now Justice Kavanaugh, soon to be Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Will this scenario play out again, this time in favor of 45? No, um, interesting question. I understand why somebody would formulate that question, but um, for the record, I see that the, um, the Amy you know, Barrett nomination is still gonna be a very rough patch. As a matter of fact, I don't feel it successfully goes through her, her uh, nomination to the Supreme Court. So just by virtue Something's of that. coming up. Yeah. And- um, Did you guys ever of, give you a little bit of a hint or anything? Yeah, I mean, just, I, I see this problem, the conflict with the hospital groups. I see that conflict. And, um, and there's also some ethical things that are coming up here that I don't want to go into, you know, publicly, but I think it'll come out in the news. Um, but anyway, so the construct of that question, will those three get in and then do the same thing that they did in the past? It was a gore. Uh, so I don't gore. see that happening now. But also it's not going to be as close as it was with gore and the electoral. Correct. It's not going to be as close. Right. But um, um, that's what I get and a lot of other readers get is that it's like that she has these happy cards, right? And then the outcome is horrible. Like the ten of swords, something major is going to happen. So uh -huh. it's like she thinks she's getting in. Now with Kavanaugh, I saw him got in, get in, and I saw them remove him. Her, I almost feel like she won't get in, and I don't know why I feel that. Yeah, and you know, my guides are telling me pretty specifically that it looks like she's not going to make it. Although it's a very, you know, it's a very weird nomination because it's being rushed through, obviously, in election year, it's all very strange. Well, here's a little flash I got, and I'll announce it now, and I'll do it on my private one. But I really feel that um, you might be surprised who doesn't vote for her. Because mm -hmm. people are losing so badly, and they may say, you know what, screw it, I'm not voting for her. Yeah. Well, you know, you know I've talked about what we thought were going to be at least the five GOP uh, mm -hmm. senators that were not going to vote for her. So I still feel there's something going on. With and they're not going to tell McConnell, of course. They're not going to start that drama, but McConnell thinks he's got it in like Flynn, but he's, he doesn't. That's what I'm feeling. I agree. What is the current health condition of the Queen and Prince Charles? You know, um, the, the Queen, I mean, has done a kind of a wonderful job, uh, but I do see like 2021 being a bit of a challenge for her in, in the health area. Um, and at some point here, and I don't think it's 2021, it could be, or maybe 2022, but I do see uh, Charles stepping in for a very short period of time, like six months before it rolls over to the next, uh, the next person. So a bit of a health challenge for the queen next year, it looks like. Um, so, I mean, I think that's the essence of the question. What is the current health can, oh, <laughs> we just said, how about Prince Charles? Uh, Health-wise, I mean, it looks to me like he holds his own, but for some reason, there's something going on there where he go when he does step in, it's only for a, like a six-month period. That's what I've always felt too. Yeah. yeah, and then there's something there that brings him back. Uh, that could be health as well. I haven't spent a lot of time looking at that, but I that's come through a few times on the Queen and Charles. Um, and Phillips is, isn't that doing that well here. He's getting really old. Right. Are crop circles meant to teach us a new way of communicating mathematically, or are they trying to warn us of upcoming disasters? So all of the above. So there is very sophisticated messaging that that actually has you know scientific uh, content to it. So there there are warnings, there are messages, there is information on on the universe. So it's like all of the above. And at some point here, could be as fast as five years, we'll actually be able to figure out how to decode like the language in those crop circles. So it's, it's very specific messaging. Um, cool. yeah. yeah. Is it mathematical? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. 
Yeah. You know, it's interesting. A lot of those crop circles get created sometimes inside of a minute or more. So, you know, the people that would say they're hoaxes, they're so, they're so sophisticated. They've actually set up cameras and like within a minute that crop circle gets You'll created. You'll see those white lights go around. Right, right. Um, during hearings this week, Sheldon Whitehouse brought up the matter of corruption in the Supreme Court. He implied that nominees are bought and paid for by the conservative groups. Is this true? If so, will it be stopped? You know, um, it will be stopped. So that, that's a deep question there. there. There have been a number of payouts done for the members of the Supreme Court. And, you know, payouts can be all sorts of, for all sorts of reasons, right? They can be right. uh, because, you know, now your mortgage loan went away or something like that. So there have been some manipulation. Kavanaugh, for court. instance. Yeah, yeah, there have been. And it will be uncovered uh, within next year, the first year of the Biden presidency. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad. There's a lot of stuff getting ready to come out. There are a lot of therapy techniques around the ancestral line. Um, what? There are a lot of therapy techniques around the ancestral line. Is it true that we carry the wounds of our ancestors? Do we pay for our parents' karma? Simple answer is no. The simple answer is you carry your individual karma. Yeah, so, that's what I get. Uh, it's really an individual karma. You don't necessarily because we travel in very large spiritual families, sometimes there's several hundred individuals. Um, so we don't carry the karma of all those individuals. It's a unique karma to ourselves. Yeah. The Republicans are threatening to change the electors in swing states. The game plan is to cont contest the mail-in ballots and declare them invalid, remove the Democratic electors and replace them with Republican electors. Will this be successful? No, and, and kind of similar to some previous questions there. Um, no, it won't be successful. And um, I guess what, what I'm getting is that the Supreme Court's gonna get involved because some manipulation going on with the Supreme Court will have to rule on it. So actually, we'll, we'll get Supreme Court interaction on this whole situation. Yeah, but well, it won't be the Supreme Court won't go for it, right? They'll say Cor correct, correct. Yeah. Even with the the justices that are in there now, right? Because I feel like the, that they know it's so shoddy, it it can't stand. Yeah, well, it'll be it'll be outright manipulation in an illegal way that doesn't even follow, you know, the Constitution or anything that we have here in this country. So Supreme Court will rule on it and uh, shoot it down. You know? Okay. Uh, when you pass on, do you feel sad seeing your loved ones grieving? Inherently, no. And this might be kind of surprising. The grieving process is like a human interaction on this planet. So when your loved ones cr cross over, they certainly wanna be around you and support you and, and really let you know that they're still around. That's one of the biggest things. They try to get your attention using all sorts of methods. But the ones that have crossed on don't necessarily take the, the energy of the grieving process with them or feel it. That's a human experience here on the earth. Does that make sense? Right. So yeah, you're living in a state of love on the other side. Right, and they're so happy over there. They, they are sad for us that we're in such grief, but it's hard for them to physically feel that. Right. They're actually, actually a little confused, like why would you stop your life over me? Please keep living, be, be present. It, exactly, because they can still see everything going on in your life, that's the thing. Yeah, it's you like, and by the way, they tell me all the time, I'm more alive now than when I had a body, so. Exactly, and by the way, they leave signs around. They always try to get the attention of the relatives whether it's, it's butterflies or it's change on the floor where it shouldn't be, or they'll always put signals out there to say, hey, I'm still around. Yeah. That's right. For me, it'd be cupcakes. I... <laughs> <laughs> on several occasions, pilots going into LAX report seeing what looks like a person with a jet pack at 7,000 feet. Please explain what is being seen. So what, what I get on that is uh, that's an irresponsible jetpack pilot. And I think what's gonna be very interesting here is that um, it seems like a lot of the country or even people in this area don't understand that there's, there's been jetpack technology brought into this country. So they feel like they, they know where it's all at. 
And so this is an irresponsible pilot and it's gonna be uncovered, I feel, over the next number of weeks, actually. Oh, wow. Uh, Sterling, previously you stated you saw an accidental nuclear explosion uh, in North Korea. Do you still see it? I do, you know, unfortunately for me, it's, it's like the November, December timeframe. It's definitely like the end of the year, but there is gonna be a nuclear explosion in North Korea it's going to be an accidental, it's an accidental event. Um, looks like something blows up even on the launch pad or with some testing being done. Um, a lot of the nuclear fallout will be contained to that part of the world, but there will be, I think months ago, you and I talked about this. I saw a nuclear accident, yeah, in North Korea. Is that happening this year or next year? It is, this year before the end I, of the year. I just was, my reading last time I saw an explosion. I wonder if that's it. Yeah, and I... I uh, well, I, I mean, I know that that's the biggest one that I see, and that, that even three months ago, you and I talked about that. I saw that in North Korea. Um, yeah, I, it's still coming up towards the end of the year here. Yeah. When a building that is reportedly haunted is demolished, what happens to the spirits that were earthbound in that spot? So earth, earthbound is a choice. So actually, you know, they, they can stay there if they like. They're not necessarily connected to the house per se. Yeah. Uh, there's always a connect, but it's a connection to the environment or the area that they're in. Uh, but that's a choice being earthbound. So uh, they, they don't necessarily go away with the house, which is kind of the question, I guess. And, and I know a lot of houses, new houses that are haunted because of exactly. The and then they go back and they do some sort of a screening and they say there was a old Victorian house here before the apartment building and they get it all down now. Yeah, so. Are there places or ways to burn off your karma other than coming back to earth? You know, there are. And what I see is sometimes individuals, when they pass on, they're asked, you're asked to do things on the other side. So for example, if you commit suicide in this life, a lot of times you may help suicide victims as they cross over. That more or less is kind of a way of working off your karma. Right, but it's much slower over there. It is. A lot of uh, energy forms say, you know what? No, I'll just go ahead and come back and try to, you can take care of a lot of different karma while you're in body. Yeah, and karma is all about growth, by the way. Yeah. So that's what, it's not about uh, putting you know, the heebie-jeebies on somebody, so to speak. It's all about, you know, getting engaged more in growth where you need to grow. So. Right, and you know, um, I tell a lot of people who struggle in this on this plane, listen, you've done a terrific job and basically your brownie points are, you know, you've, you've completed your karma because people say, man, I must've been bad in another life. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's beautiful over there. What happens when you exit and you're like done with it. Absolutely. How will U.S. relations with Russia be after 45? You know, uh, the U.S. is going to hit a hit a kind of a, a better patch with Russia, but it's like two years out. But it's two years out because Putin is going to make an exit. Yeah. So he actually be, yeah. be replaced within two years, and so we're going to be on a little different footing between Biden and the new uh, the, the Putin replacement. Okay. So it's going to restabilize a bit. It's not going to be all about you know illegal money laundering into real estate. It's going to have a whole different tone to it. So and the people will have nutritious foods and stuff, because they are just taking everything from the regular people. They will. Um, is 45 going for herd, wait, is 45 going for herd mentality, will it work? I mean, herd immunity. <laughs> and that same was thing, that, same thing. That was the slip that Trump made, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, he has suggested it. It will never, it will never be executed. It will never be done. In this country, he's voicing it, but it will never, never be executed. It won't be a real policy to combat COVID nineteen. No. Okay. Um, do you see anything coming up for next week? I do. You know, I, I believe that we're going to see uh, more trickles of information from Nancy Pelosi regarding some of the investigations behind the scenes. Okay. We're going to see we're going to see some more fallout on Amy Coney Barrett, right? The Supreme Court Justice uh, nominee will be more fallout. Um, and we're also going to see, interestingly enough, uh, more manipulation of the voting process. So this is going to come out more publicly 
uh, how the voting process is, they're trying to manipulate it on the okay. GOP side. And, and that's gonna be uncovered in a way that's gonna help, so. So listen, this Rudy Giuliani thing that mm -hmm. he's presenting this bogus thing from Russia with love that only um, R Rupert Murdoch's magazine, the Washington Post picked mm -hmm. up trying to act like it's a big deal. It's, it's fizzling. It's literally, yeah. I mean, the FBI already announced that they warned everybody Giuliani was in the hands of Russia. Right. And um, it's a nothing burger, correct? It is, exactly, yeah. Interesting enough, Giuliani's daughter came out in the press this week. I don't know if you saw that and said, oh, by the way, you know, uh, vote for Biden. So I heard he's a severe alcoholic, Giuliani is. That, that I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily pick up anything on that. But um, but it's, you know, he's um, he's been in the hands of Russia for a lot of years. Okay. And, you know, you if you notice, we're not seeing Barr anymore. There's not, there's, I've had no sight. I heard he, he went indoors and blocked himself out because of COVID exposure. Maybe he actually has COVID. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I do believe he's going through some health challenges. Uh, okay. He never I, looked good. He looked great. Yeah, yeah. And last question is, do you have any information that your guys want to share? Your guys are so they, cool. That they do. So, you know, this week, uh, very simple message. I like them. Uh, the simple message is keep calm. Uh, That's what I always say. Uh, don't buy into fear because the definition of fear, as we all know, is false evidence appearing real. So keep calm. Uh, this is all actually going Not ready to well. end. And just like, you know, JFK and JFK Jr. said at the, the top of the show, this will all be very successful. Very the successful. Presidency, this will all be very successful. It'll be a reset. And, um, you know, the good thing that, that Trump has done, he's pointed all the weaknesses in our infrastructure and politics and in government. So it's almost identified all the areas that have to be fixed. And then we'll go in there and fix it up. And, you know, I don't know who came to me. I'll have to look at my past videos, but it might have been a former president that's deceased. But he said as clear as day, it is finished. That's just exactly what he said. And we were all like, all of my people that watch my show is like, whoa, it is finished. It's done. Absolutely. Don't worry about it. And listen, um, his ratings, Trump's ratings were <laughs> terrible compared to Biden's town hall. Right, right. Yeah. And um, I just would love to know as a, we don't wish ill will, but as a little fly in the White House, can you see, because he's saying, we're beating out everything. He's lying, lying, lying. Can you see that he actually knows he's going to lose? I know the administration is like, they're already doom and gloom. You know, um, what I pick up from him very clearly is he's a little bit in a, um, he, he's in a haze. So he's actually so focused on like a dog with a bone. I have to win at all costs. He actually is not thinking about, he's so afraid of losing, he's not focused on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So he's actually a bit delusional. It's and like, you know, he's been throwing Barr under the bus. Well, at the very least. So, right? But, you know, other people are watching. If, if you're not 100% what he wants, even though he thought you were so good, he'll throw you under the bus. He doesn't care. He's yeah. going to get mad at his voters for losing. No, he will. But I mean, you know, kind of an answer to your question, I what I see is he's so focused on, I got to win, I got to win. You know, that's the mantra that he's not even thinking about losing or where he's at. He's just, he's doing everything and, and everything he can. Yeah. And, and he was a surprise last time. So he's thinking he can pull it off again. Well, we all know, you know, it was man, the whole manipulation, right? In the election last time. So, you know, they say he won. History will have to prove that out, you know. Yeah, they'll yeah. come back and say, now, but let me ask you one last question. Um, are we actually going to have another debate this Thursday? You know, here's the interesting part. I think very possible. When I when I did a reading on this uh, weeks and weeks ago, I saw only one presidential debate. Right. I only saw one. So well, kind of interesting that another one's coming up. I don't have to tell you. Um, I got to tell you, I still feel like there's something going to get in the way of that. And I don't know. Or exactly. the one that he did have wasn't really a debate. It was just a shouting match. Maybe this Thursday they'll actually do a little bit of a debate. 
<laughs> yeah, but my, my guides were very clear about one presidential debate. So maybe you're right. Maybe the last one was a screening match, and this will be more of a, a debate. We'll see. Because he, he, he blows it, my friend. He does it to himself. He's <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like, SNL, on. Saturday Night Live did a spoof on the first presidential debate, and Jim <laughs> Carrey uh, played Biden. Uh, right, and uh, and Alec Baldwin, you know, played Trump. And I gotta tell you, it was hard to distinguish that SNL skit from the real debate. <laughs> but no, the way Jim Carrey, they were making fun of Biden too. Yeah, they well, were. Let me yeah. tell you a story, and people are like, "Do we have to?" Right. <laughs> and he goes through it. It's like time is passing, and he's saying his story. It was, you know, back in the old days. Boy, I did this and I did that. Because I heard he, he's a chatter. Biden likes to talk. All good. A lot, lot of fun. But SNL always, they always nail it. The so. difference between, Biden can't carry this whole load on his own. And the good news about Biden is he will bring in smart people. He, we will actually have an administration. We didn't have one with Trump. It was yeah, his way Kamala, or the highway. Kamala Harris will be a, a tremendous help. And look at the CDC, what he did to these scientists. Right. You know, that Biden saying it out loud, the, and I'll see Dr. Fauci right in the middle of this. He'll grab him up, not Burke, but Fauci, he'll grab him up because Fauci stood against Trump. And that's what Biden likes, someone who'll tell the truth and doesn't feel, you know, manipulate it. But all those guys, we'll look at this later. We have a lot to talk about because after November 3rd, there's a lot of these Republicans that are going down big time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And he I saw that Trump in the town hall said, we're turning the corner on COVID-19. He said, we're turning the corner. And I think we just uh, crossed one of the worst weeks the nation's ever had. So, uh, yeah. Oh, and, and poor France, they're, they're, do, uh, they're shutting down. I miss traveling. I can't wait till we can travel again. Yeah, it's going to be the next year, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. thank you, because I want to come see you and Linda. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll all get together. Absolutely. So I can see Linda now. Wait, when she thinks she's coming? <laughs> <laughs> well, this was wonderful. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. A lot much. of fun as always. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Uh, let's see. I'm going to stop.